Uh, Rich Gallup, everybody, everyone here know Rich Gallup? <laughs> Needs him. A man who needs no... It is good and weird to be back. Yeah, it's weird to have you here. It's really considering comfortable it's over here. kind of your fault I'm sitting in this chair. So do you want me to tell a story or do you want to tell the story? You go for it. So uh, for people who don't know... Alexander Zoe probably don't know. Alexander Bruce, everyone, yeah, creator of Antichamber. Yeah. And Zoe Quinn, the most popular person on the internet. <laughs> So the story is, once upon a time, I used to sit in this chair. Not this chair. Well, that chair. Yeah. That guy was my boss. <laughs> These guys were, I was part of their crew. I got Chris his job, because yeah, he went to would college with my wife. Yeah, I my resume to Rich any time a posting was on GameSpot like, for a new job. Nice. And after a, a seven year absence, I think you guys have finally maybe gotten here. Okay, so really? <laughs> bar. Okay, you, the guys, you guys, this is awesome. This, I never would have imagined that you guys would get, this is, you have a gorgeous set, you have great shows, you have great repartee. We have a gorgeous photograph of the set. Yeah, oh, I've seen the set though. Like, yeah. My desk was behind that portrait. Yeah, we have to rip out the old on the spot thing. I'm sorry about that. Where is it? To do it. I don't know, it's probably in Giancarlo's office, That's, like uh, everything else. Uh, yeah. uh, you're probably wondering why I assembled this motley crew of, uh, of random game developers. Um, I had interesting chats with you guys at GDC, and whenever we talk, it's always great to pick your brain about the reasons why you're doing what you're doing based on like your personal lives. So I had an interesting chat with you, Alex, about you released Antichamber, you've been working on it for 12 decades, eventually got it out, and now are you out of love with indie? Do you want to go into mainstream game development? Or was this all just like a reason to get out of Australia? And I mean that in like, I know you want to get out of Australia. <laughs> it's, it, it's complicated. I mean, I don't even know if I want to get out of, outside mm. of Australia now. You know, I, I like testing the waters in a whole lot of different ways. Um, I didn't get into making Antichamber because I was like, I love, you know, indie games. I have to be an independent de you know, game developer. I was playing games all of my life. I was starting to get a bit over what a lot of mainstream things were doing. Sorry, Bethesda, who was just on. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to get a bit over things, and so I went into university, didn't know what I was doing, gave myself a lot of options, fell into game development, fell into independent game development, mm. and just had to spend several years you know, working on that because everything was all really circumstantial. And after that process was finished, I didn't really know what to do with myself, and it's a bit complicated. You know, emotions are complicated, but... You know, I just took some time to step away from things, think about you know, what I want to be doing moving forward. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Because you've been sort of enjoying your time after Antichamber, doing a lot of sort of touring, coming to events like this, even though you're not necessarily showing anything off. Like, what is it about indie development that maybe is pushing you away? Or is it just you have creative things you want to do that aren't involved, that can't be done with that? Are you sick of it? It's not really things about independent development that are pushing me away. It's that I spent basically 26 years only caring about work. Like, my mm. whole world was just about work. Uh, I made this game, things went, you know, great. And, uh, you know, the, the process was just so rough on me emotionally that mm. I was like, all right, I've had this big success, and now I don't know what to do with myself. And, you know, I'm trying to... People are very adverse to change. You know, yeah. you move house, you start a job, you lose a job, it's difficult to deal with. I basically had to say, all right, 26 years, was one set of problems, now absolutely none of that matters. Mm. Here's a completely new set of problems that you have to deal with, go. You know, and, that's, and that's quite difficult. And so some of me wanting to step away was just getting away from that a bit, so I right. can think about yeah, yeah. some other things. Uh, speaking of emotions, Zoe, I obviously working on It's Not Okay Cupid. Most people would know you from Depression Quest, which you, you created last year. Um, I didn't get to go, but I heard your, your panel with Patrick yesterday. Was, was, was anyone here at that one? Uh, wow. Thank um, you for coming. What is it about, because your work, especially over the past year, has basically, it's been so, maybe not detrimental, but it's impacted your personal life so much. What is it about making games that, why are you still doing this if it's so negatively <laughs> affecting you in so many other different ways? Why am I still doing this? Well, I mean, honestly, I still feel like I, I came from all these different places in creativity before ending up in games, and it's like the one thing that's been able to hold my attention for this long being able to combine all these different things into one really cohesive, specific statement is, I, I don't know another way to do that. And beyond that, I, I feel like it's just such a powerful medium and such an exciting time to be here. Mm. There's so many different things happening and there's like, you can have real impact as an indie game developer right now 
um, maybe what happens in the future, like being able to come to things like this and talk to people, and talk to people who maybe didn't know that they could be a game developer yet and just need to hear somebody tell them that they can do it, right? Being able to do that is such an amazing thing, and I am not sure what I could, what is more valuable than that that I can be doing with my time and with the amount of visibility that I have suddenly out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, I've only I've only really been doing this for two years too, but I've I've loved video games like my entire life. I'm actually working on a weird, silly thing now to sort of decompress instead of uh, focusing on it's not okay, Cupid. Is it a reality TV show about indie? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, have you seen the movie The Room? Yes. I may be talking with one of the cast members about doing an FMV game. Is it Tommy Wiseau? I'm, I don't want to say who it is because I, I, want, oh I don't want to jinx it. Okay. But I, I sort of want to be able to do something goofy and ridiculous, and especially because like it's an indie rite of passage to like do the nostalgic game of your childhood. But my yeah. first my first console was a 3DO. Okay. My first console yeah. game was Night Trap, so it's my turn. <laughs> The video games industry is tearing you apart, Lisa. Tearing me apart! I got it. it. So when you look at these two young whippersnappers, and you as an elderly man... Uh, <laughs> you have more gray hair than me, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Not yeah. on my eyebrow, though. It's, well, That's that so happened when I was like 12. Anyways, go on. It happened, was the Horcrux? Is that what it was? Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. um, so when I... You know, they're young, successful, enjoying it in the creative you know, part of their life. You're jaded and tired. And, I'm not jaded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just ra I'm trying to razz on you right now. All right, go ahead. But you've got, like, you've got a family, you've got a kid. Like, how much does that influence the type of work that you do? Because oh, you went I from the press into the development. You obviously had, you know, when 38 shut down, that was, must have been really traumatic. And then you had summer camp. Yes. Like, how much of what you do creatively is impacted by your, your responsibilities as a all, husband? All, of, all of it right now. Um, and not only impacts what I do creatively, but also how I treat uh, my coworkers. So right now, I'm executive producer at Disruptor Beam. Uh, we have a uh, Game of Thrones game, Game of Thrones Ascent. We announced our new game this week, Star Trek Timelines. Very exciting stuff. Um, Good pitch. Thank you. I have to say <laughs> it, otherwise they won't let me come here. Uh, no, uh, but basically, so I have a wife, I have a kid. That's why we moved back to the East Coast. So my wife could go to law school and pursue her, pursue her career. Mm -hmm. uh, the chair was starting to fall apart at GameSpot. Yeah. So, uh, no. Um, and now that I have that, and now that I'm in a position in my career where I help determine how other people should be spending their time at work, um, like I know I want to spend, I love my job and I do my job all the time, but yeah. I also I love my son and I love my wife and I see them as much as possible. So uh, I'm in a position to make sure that I get to do that, but then I also ensure that all my coworkers get to do that as well. Mm. Um, like, I, so I'm 35 now, and from 22 to 32, it was, I was probably, I felt like I was working 12 hour days. Is that fair, Ryan? We were doing some of that, yeah. 16, yeah, but, and that was awesome, because I loved it, because that's all I wanted to do, but now it's like, hey, you know what's really nice? Hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if I want to spend time in that hammock, uh, I can, hmm. but I also want to make sure that everyone who works around me can also get some good hammock time and also make a great game, like Game of Thrones Ascent. <laughs> Do you think that's why there, is, uh, the, the tends not to be, obviously those giant bomb guys are weird, but there tends not to be that many older game journalists? Like Jeff is going to be doing that his entire life. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like I, yourself, Brian Eckberg, like so many right. uh, big games. Well, why stars. I'm not a game journalist anymore is because, because of, I had to move ge geographically. Mm. Um, and Would you still be doing it? Uh, may, maybe it's it's so much more fun to make something yourself than to talk about someone else's stuff. Right. Like there's definitely some joy Thanks. out of making. Well, it's, it's it's true. Like making the show is awesome, but like and having those shows, like we got to make a cartoon actually based on Night Trap that you should watch. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh my god! Mind. It's called Time Trotters. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, excellent. So, but uh, and making that show was more fun than doing interviews, like you get to meet all kinds of great people here, yeah. uh, and you get to uh, get to, like a taste of that creativity, but like for every person who's on a couch from a studio, uh, there's another, there's hundreds more people that are just as talented and just as awesome, mm. like making some small part of, of the game, and to be able to be around those people all the time and be able to just help them do their job, it's just, uh, it's awesome. Also, it's really nice having a deadline that isn't today. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, what are we doing today? Oh, okay, when's it due? All right, today, all right, good, all right. Now it's Tuesday, what's up? Do it again. That's what the schedule is at GameSpot, but now yeah, yeah. I'm making video games like, wait, we have months? Or years. We have years? So Look at all the stuff we can do. Yeah. So you, you work in big teams. Alexander, you were 
essentially working on your own for that long period of time. That's you, the story. Do you feel, uh, even, <laughs> just even in your own space, you were like... I was working oh. isolated. I did have other people like in Austin and in the Netherlands, yeah. but I did the most of it, yeah. So do you feel like if you were to do another project, whatever that may be, in games or not, that you'd prefer to do it with other people? Was that, did that take a toll? It definitely took a toll. I mean, like, the circumstances that I'm in now are very different to mm. what I was going through when I was making Antichamber. And I mean, like, I know a hell of a lot more talented people now than I did then. And so if I was starting up a new project, it would be much easier to get people on board with, with my ideas than it was when I was just some random student trying to convince other students why they should work with me instead of go and drink beer. Yeah. Um, and Zoe, you, you tend to work on really small projects that take like a couple of months, you kind of work on them, get them out, work on them, get them out. You've got a long list of games that are, that are out and available. Uh, is that something you like doing more so, like stuff that you could kind of spend a couple of months on rather than spending like your general like two or three years development? Well, it's tricky. I've been working on it since I but for two years actually, and it's like... Oh, really? Yeah. On and off? On, on and off, yeah. Depression, I wasn't, I expected five people to play Depression Quest, mm. four people to think I was insane, and one person would be like, oh, okay. Um, so that was totally not something I expected at all. Um, I do like shorter dev cycles because I, especially because I'm so new at this, I learn things really quickly. Like I, I'm, I'm still figuring out what my voice is, um, and I'm so ridiculously burnt out. Yeah. Uh, like after two years, and which is one of the reasons I'm taking a step away and doing something less serious for a little while. That's why you're working on a new game. Yeah. Because you're burned I, out. <laughs> it's. It's just, it's, I, I'm also worried about getting to that trap where you just keep making new things and not actually finishing Never finishing one, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I do kind of want to shift into something where I'm at least working with other people, um, partially to make sure, A, I don't get designeritis and do that constantly, mm -hmm. and B, because it's really kind of miserable working alone in the way that I have been. Um, I need someone to, because you like can tunnel focus really hard and like you sort of like are chasing your own tail and changing mm. things that don't need to be changed and it's good to have someone that would be like, you're being stupid, stop doing that. Um, so I'm hopefully going to start doing different stuff in, in terms of that. Awesome. I, yeah, I think the sooner that you, you, you can again be recognized for the games and because you've got an interesting alternative persona now or like responsibility with depression quest that sort of does that get too much maybe sometimes where you've become this kind of voice for this community it's it's definitely a lot more than I ever anticipated mm. like again I thought no one would play it um, and as I feel like there is sort of I, I do have a responsibility I take it very seriously I'm working through backlogs of months of emails of people that have reached out because it's I know it's how hard it is to reach out to somebody yeah. And when somebody starts off an email with, I've never told anybody this before, I feel like that can't be responded to as silence. Yeah. And, or, and I know that I'm probably running myself ragged doing that, but it's still really important to me, so it's worth it. Um, and yeah, it's like, I feel so, so bad sometimes too, because people come to me looking for answers. It's like, I'm not a therapist, yeah, I'm just yeah. a game developer. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk. And I mean, it's just, it's such a weird thing. I never, I never thought I'd be in any sort of position to do this, especially because I made video games. Yeah, but much respect for doing it and for, for tackling it and actually responding to those emails because a lot of other people wouldn't do it. Uh, before I let you guys go, I want to ask, because this is PAX and because you are all involved in game development and so many of you champion other games, uh, what is the one game on the show floor that you think stands out? Alexander, first of all. Mushroom 11, obviously you guys saw me at the booth and yeah. I'm like, I, I forced you to play that yeah. game and yeah. I'm forcing everyone to play it that works. game because it's amazing and you should all go play that game. You should work in PR. <laughs> um, get, uh, Rich? I'll pick Tower of Guns. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Made by a good friend of mine from 38 Studios, Joe Mirabello, he's an environment artist who made this roguelike, basically uh, tribute to Doom, first person shooter that uh, if you like such things, uh, you should play it. It's on the floor. There's a lot of it's rockets and here. guns. Lots of bullets, lots of bunny hops. Yeah, straight circle strafing. Yeah, <laughs> old school. Just like Wolfenstein, except without the Nazis. Exactly. Uh, and Zoe, what do you think? I'm going to be horrifically biased and go with uh, Framed because it's doing a lot of interesting stuff with nonlinear storytelling. And uh, it's, I also am a major sap for noir stories. Mm. And it's got a really beautiful art style. And I'm curious to see what that ends up being at the end. Awesome. Rich Gallup, Alexander Bruce, and Zoe Quinn, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you guys stay there for a minute. I believe somebody's going to win a PlayStation Vita before we get kicked out of here. Let's get ready to do. So we're playing Star Wars. Is this thing on? Does this even work? Just the tip. Me? Yeah. Is your microphone? Your microphone's off. Is this working? Off. I'm. I just have to yell. Can you hear me now?
if I talk really loudly. What an oh, amateur. There we go. There we go. Uh, first person from this area to put up two hands gets to play. It was you. He beat you had your hand up first, but he went to first. So so close. Is that Wincy? No. All right. No? All right. <laughs> and over here, hold up exactly three fingers. This guy right here. Okay. Uh, the game is Starwall, just the tip. In the year 20XX, narwhals have ascended into space, faring life forms whose only goal is to jab each other in the hearts with their pointy tusks. We're going to play for one minute. With no space. Come I'm over sorry. here, both <laughs> of you like people who I have chosen. <laughs> Go. Why is this button? Not Have you guys play? played Star Wars? Yes. No. It's a, I think it's out of the UK, I'm pretty sure. Press A on that uh, controller. It's basically a multiplayer color. game where you're all narwhals and you have to stab the narwhal in the narwhal heart. Right. It's pretty good. Uh, all right. Pick different colors. Put something on your head. Tell me what your name is. My name's Tim. Tim versus Doug. Doug. Doug and Tim. Tim versus Random applause Doug. for Doug and Tim. All right. The duel for the PlayStation Vita begins now. Press the A button, please. Remember, and trust off. the tip. All that is required is the tip to pierce the heart. The buttons are as follows. A is to flap your tail. Use the anal left analog stick to uh, point yourself in a different yeah. direction. We've got our first hit of the round. There's 44 seconds left. One. Nil is the score. These graceful athletes. <laughs> heart to heart. Oh, what a piece. From Doug. Tim and Doug here locked in a death struggle for a PlayStation Vita. Oh, comes in with the heart exposed. That's an amateur mistake. You can't be that careless with your heart. We've got one to two. Oh, one to two left. Three. It's equalized. We're counting down to 15. Flippity flop, he gets it on the wrong side. And these Ten, two, nine, nine, eight. eight. Can he pull it out? Oh. It's so <laughs> Doug yeah. in the lead, he's got three. Oh. It's two. We're counting down one. And that is oh. it. Ladies and gentlemen, your victor of the duel, Doug. Here he is, folks. Let's hold up that Vita. Doug, 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 Doug. And your runner-up, winner of the guy who almost got to win the Vita, it's Tim. Tim, 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 Tim.